Welcome to the first video in my series on creating plugins for WISE using Pure Data and the Heavy Compiler. These tutorials are targeted for 64-bit Windows 10 users. Mac users, you can do all the same things that we do in this tutorial, except that your processes will be modified a little bit in some places. Each of these requirements is free to download, and you can find all of the links to download every single one of them in the video description below. The first link that you're going to come to is the link to download the Heavy Compiler itself. Go ahead and navigate to this Clone or Download button, expand it, and click Download Zip. I'm going to be placing everything on my desktop as we go along this series to make it easier to follow along with me. So I'm going to go ahead and extract this, the contents of the, of the zip file onto the desktop. I could get rid of this zip now. Next, if you follow the link to download Python 2.7, it will take you to this page. Right here, a bug fix release 2.7.13 is currently available. Go ahead and click on the available link. And then under files, you will find, if you are working on Windows, uh, the Windows 32-bit and 64-bit installers down here at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and click on the 64-bit installer, x86-64. Then I'm going to navigate to that file, double-click it. and install for all users. I'm just going to click Next. Now it's asking me if I want to overwrite existing files. Um, I'm going to click Yes. You might not get that because um, I already had Python 2.7 installed. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to click Next because I'm not going to be doing any customizing of Python and I'm going to click Finish. Once Python 2.7 has been installed, we can make sure that it has been downloaded correctly by opening a command prompt, and we can do that by opening up pretty much any file in uh, Windows File Explorer, clicking on the navigation field at the top of the window, and typing in CMD. And that's going to open up a command prompt uh, with the directory pointed at whatever location that you open the command prompt from. At this point, it doesn't matter. We just need to type in Python, and that will show us if Python has been installed correctly. So I'm going to type in Python and click Enter. And you may get this error. Python is not recognized as an internal or external command, operable program, or batch file. If you get this error, what you need to do is open up a File Explorer window, right-click on this PC or my PC, go to Properties, Advanced System Settings, and down here under the Advanced tab to Environment Variables. Once you're here, you're going to navigate to Path, and then click the Edit button and you're going to click on New, and then you're going to add the path to Python 2.7. In my case, it has been added to this path. Now I'm going to click OK, click OK, and open up another command prompt. Type in Python. And now you see that Python 2.7.13 has been installed. The next thing we need to do is download PyCharm, which is a Python IDE. And when you click on the link, it's going to take you to this page to download PyCharm. Make sure that your operating system is selected. So I'm using Windows. And then over here in the community uh, download, go ahead and click on the download button. Once it has finished downloading, go ahead and click on the exe to set it up. And you're going to see this window, Welcome to PyCharm Community Edition Setup. Go ahead and click Next. Go ahead and click Next if you would like to download it to the default install location. And then it's going to ask you if you want to create a desktop shortcut. So I'm going to go ahead and create a 64-bit launcher and create associations where files ending with .py are opened with PyCharm. Click Next, Install. 
Okay, and then just click finish and we're going to run PyCharm at a later time. So we're not gonna do that now. So finally, what I'm gonna do is just drag the PyCharm desktop shortcut over here to my desktop so that you can see all of the software that I'm downloading. All right, next we need to download uh, Pure Data. So once we have clicked on the link, it will take us to this page. Look down here at distributions. So go ahead and click on this first uh, link here to download Pure Data. And it's going to take you to this page where you can get pure data for whatever operating system that you're working with. We are working with Windows. So let's go ahead and click on the installer link. Once that's finished downloading, go ahead and click on the button here. Welcome to Pure Data 64 bit setup. Go ahead and click next. I agree. And we're going to just click next, install. All right, fantastic. I don't want to I don't want to see the readme and I don't want to run pure data at this time, so I'm just going to click finish. And finally, what we need is a pure data patch. So if you just click on the uh, link in the description at the bottom of the video, you will be able to download this simple wind.pd patch. And if you have any problems downloading this patch, please let me know and we'll get it fixed. Now to make sure pure data is working and to take a look at this patch, why don't we double click simplewin.pd. And what you'll see is something like this. And you should also see something like this. So in order to hear what is going on here, what you need to do is click on this little DSP box here. All right, let's go ahead and close Pure Data. Uh, you can save the project if you would like. Let's go ahead and open up our HVCC master folder. Let's click on hvcc.py, right click, open with PyCharm. What you're gonna wanna do in PyCharm is go to File, Settings, and then down here in project hvcc.py, go to project interpreter click on it and here you're going to see the packages that are installed we're going to want to install two packages that are required for making the heavy compiler work which is enum and jinja2 so go ahead and click on this little plus icon and let's search first for enum and you'll see it here go ahead and click install package you'll see down here it said packages installed successfully. Now what you're going to want to do is type in Jinja2 and click install package. And you'll see package Jinja2 installed successfully. Great. Now to make sure that all of this is working uh, properly, what we're going to do is right click, click on this run command. And what you should see here if everything worked properly is this red text that says error too few arguments. That's good. That error is actually what we want because uh, we're not running the script as it's meant to be run, but this is showing that it works and that it's ready to compile our PD patch. So let's move on to doing that. First thing that we're going to do is take our patch and we're going to put it in its own folder. So I'm going to right click on the desktop, choose new folder. I'm going to call this simple wind. Then I'm going to drag my PD patch into the folder, open up the folder, and what we're going to do is rename the PD patch underscore main. The reason we do this is that the compiler is looking for a patch named underscore main dot PD. The next thing that we're going to want to do is open up a new text file. So go to your underscore main dot pd patch, right click, go to properties, and then under location, go ahead and highlight that location, control C to copy, then I'm going to paste it right here in my notepad. If we look at the GitHub page for the heavy compiler, we are going to see some readme information here, and what we want to look at is the usage when we are building our command line command in order to run the compiler. So this is the line that we want right here. This is the most basic command that we could send to the compiler, and basically it just tells the compiler to run the code on the directory and the patch uh, that we that we give it. Now down here are a bunch more arguments that we can add and your commands are going to look something more like this. 
uh, later on. But right now, just to test to make sure that everything's working, we're going to take the very basic um, script right here. All right, then let's go into our notepad and paste that in as a template. And if you are using more than one version of Python on your machine, if you have 3.7 uh, installed on your machine as well, you're going to need to specify that you want to use Python 2.7. But I only have one version of Python on my computer, so I'm just going to get rid of that 2.7. I'm going to run it on hvcc.py, and then I have this directory here because that is where my underscore main.pd patch is. So now I add a backslash, backslash and an underscore main.pd. This is the script that I need to feed the command line in order to run heavy on my patch. Now we are going to open up our HVCC master folder and in the navigation bar type in cmd to open up a command prompt and that command prompt because you opened it from that window will open pointing at the directory where the hvcc.py file lives you have to run these commands the python commands from the from the directory where the file um, exists so now that it's pointing at that i'm going to control v to paste in the script that we constructed and let's hit enter. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to open up my simple wind uh, folder here. So you could see the folder where my patch lives um, and my patch. And now I, I come back over to the command prompt and I enter my script. It does a little pause. It goes back to uh, being ready for input and then you'll see over here that three folders have been generated with the code uh, from the main.pd patch and that means that the heavy compiler was successful in compiling our patch and everything is working smoothly. Thanks for watching. I highly encourage you to watch my next video which will go into more detail about readying your patch to be a wise plugin and uh, getting Unreal and Wise set up on your machine.